Hi, we're Otherwise, uh, Otherwise Studios from Guelph, Ontario. My name is Omri and this is Abby, and we're recording out of Otherwise Studios here in the ward, um, and we are about to do a taupe making workshop with you. Yes, so we're super excited to be here. Thank you, uh, Bummer, for having us. Um, tonight we're going to be doing a workshop uh, using things that hopefully you have available to you from your home, but we're making these super cute uh, t-shirt tote, tote bags um, and using potatoes to print with. So uh, Omri and I are going to go over the basic steps of this uh, workshop. Um, Omri's going to be taking on how to create the actual tote bag and I'm going to be showing you how to make a potato stamp. So first off, if you have just any old t-shirt that you're not using anymore, you can use a t-shirt or a long sleeved shirt, even a sweater if you've got one around, anything that has sleeves, so even a tank top would work. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut off the sleeves because I've got a little kind of half t-shirt half here. Um, so we'll start by just cutting off the sleeves um, so that you have, you're making yourself kind of a tank top. And this is going to be your um, handles for the tote bag. And this is really great because if you work at any kind of a camp or a, um, a store that gives you t-shirts every mm -hmm, month mm -hmm. and you're not so keen on the fashion waste, um, then you can reuse those tote bags and bring it to the market, you can bring it to the store, um, and then you don't have to buy reusable bags either. And I wanted to show a little bit of a demo of how they kind of fit and work. So here are my books, and there is my tote bag. So you can now rock it all over Guelph. And so I'm going to just kind of show off now how to prep your potato. So um, you're just going to want to get any regular potato. Um, you can also use things like linoleum, uh, wood block. Um, if you're looking to do kind of more advanced uh, print uh, for this craft, but we thought we were going to just use something very simple and super fun. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to cut it open and you're going to want to try to remove as much moisture as possible from your surface. Um, this is going to allow you to uh, put more ink on, it's going to allow you to maybe draw an image on there if you need um, a little bit of a stencil. Um, I'm going to do a fairly simple design because I'm going to pattern it onto the t-shirt. Um, so I'm going to just draw a quick image of what I'm going to be cutting out. Doesn't need to be very technical, can be fun. And while she does the drawing on the potato, I'm just going to show you quickly. Um, so I cut off the sleeves, and I also cut the neckline a little bit because I had a higher scoop. Um, so I just cut that so that it's easier access. Um, if you're picturing a tote bag and you want to reach in, it's just like a bigger hole at the top. Um, and what I'll do is uh, at the bottom, you're going to want to, what we're going to do is cut um, tassels so that you can tie. This is a no-sew tote bag. So you can tie together the bottom to make uh, it not have a hole in the bottom. Yeah, so no need to have a sewing machine for this craft. Um, so again, you'll only need a potato, a t-shirt, and then maybe some carving tools and scissors. So right now what I'm doing is I'm uh, carving a solid, maybe uh, like two centimeters away from the surface of your uh, potato. This is going to be the depth of your relief print. Um, unlike linoleum, uh, with potato stamps, you're going to want to get a little bit more depth to your print uh, just to prevent any um, globbing of your paint when you go to print. Um, but don't worry too much. Uh, it's very forgiving and if you mess up, uh, you can always remove more. Um, so I am literally just cutting this potato out. And if you've ever carved a pumpkin, it's very, very, very similar to that. Um, and if you have carved a pumpkin, you know uh, about the safety of handling sharp utensils um, 
they are tools. Um, so just be mindful of where your hands are in uh, relation to where the knife is going. And so since we are doing a relief print, uh, which means it's something that you're carving and then going to be physically stamping and it's just the surface um, of the uh, top that is going to be printed, uh, you're going to want to think about uh, your image in terms of uh, it being flipped. So if you are spelling something, if it's a symbol, um, if it matters, if it goes backwards, kind of think about kind of flipping that image. Otherwise, if it's just like a, a heart or um, a butterfly or cool uh, lines, it's totally fine to not even consider that in your process. And a really good tool to use too, um, just as we're both kind of carving and mm -hmm. cutting away, um, a good tool if you're using text is to just straight up Google um, a text reverse generator. And um, you want the reverse, the re a mirror generator instead of just backwards because if you Google, um, if you Google making text backwards, it'll just show you a word backwards. So if I'm spelling um, my name, A-H-M-R-I, it'll show me I-R-M-H-A. But if I want to make it mirrored, um, then it'll show me the actual letter flipped as if it was in a mirror, which will then make your text appear in the right direction when you print it. Yeah. So I've just removed the first layer of the potato skin. Um, and you can already see that it looks more like a, a stamp. Um, so essentially, we are just making stamps out of potatoes. So I'm, I've gotten to the end of my tassel making for um, a tank top. And of course, Abby and I are doing this at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, we're tag teaming this, mm -hmm. so it's a pretty quick process. But um, even if you're doing it by yourself, doing um, the t-shirt and then creating the stamp, it's super quick, super easy, very accessible materials. Um, and you can kind of ramp it up with linoleum or wood, which we can talk about a little bit later. Um, but what I've done with the tassels is I have cut these, um, I guess, like inch long strips at the bottom of my shirt. Um, and I put a line across. So I just took a ruler and a piece of charcoal. A pencil would work. Some chalk would work as well if you've got a dark piece or a dark shirt. And I just made a line across the bottom where I wanted my tassels to end, so mm -hmm. where the bottom of your toe would be. Um, you don't need this step. Uh, you can just kind of eyeball it, but it does help make sure that the bottom is um, sort of straight. And then as I'm approaching the edge of the t-shirt, I already did it on one side, but I'll show you on this side just as I'm finishing up. You have the edge of the t-shirt where it kind of like loops around your body, and you just want to cut the seam so that you have an even number of tassels. And I'll show you why that's important in a second. So I have these tassels, and I'm, I'm purposely making it so that my um, design of the t-shirt is going to be on the outside, and my tassels are actually going to be hanging, but mm -hmm. you can make your, you can hide your tassels as well, so mm -hmm. you can flip it inside out, um, which you can do if you want kind of your potato stamp to take presents over the, pr the um, print that's on the t-shirt. Yeah, I remember when we first um, kind of came across uh, this sew list uh, tote bag, I was like so excited for it to be tassel free, but I know Omri was like, I, I don't know why anyone tassels. would hide this. The tassels are where it's at, so you can I think definitely you embrace pick and it. Yeah, yeah, and you can make the tassels longer too. I've made them a little bit shorter just because I wanted a bigger bag. Um, but if you were to bring the cuts all the way up to say like the middle of the t-shirt, you would have these nice kind of long um, dangly tassels, which would add to. The piece and you can even like if you have if you are a sewer already and you have um, scrap pieces of material hanging around you can add them to this bag as well and just kind of tie them in so that you have multicolored tassels um, yes I really love the tassels so. you do I know that but we'll show yeah. you we'll show you both sides of it so what I'm doing is I'm just taking um, you can see that I've cut the, the kind of inch apart it doesn't really matter how thick your um, tassels are, it just depends on like if you want them to show, then you can kind of consider what you want them to look like. If you don't want them to show, it's probably better to make them smaller so that they're not as chunky on the inside when you flip it. Um, but basically you're tying the front of the t-shirt and the back of the t-shirt together. And I'm just doing a simple knot. Uh, so anyone can do this, kids, adults, seniors, 
angsty teens, mm -hmm. anyone. Um, it's a nice kind of TV activity, uh, and I'm just giving it a double knot. So yeah, maybe maybe soaking up the last little bit of sunshine that we have these days, sitting yeah. outside. It's a great mindless kind of hand activity to do. Yeah. And especially fun if you don't know how to sew, it's a good intro on like working with textiles, but not necessarily knowing how to use a sewing needle. So I'm just gonna go all the way across the bottom of the tank top and you can kind of see the progress there. And I'm gonna go all the way across. And so as Armory's doing that, you can um, maybe see that I'm kind of carving away um, some negative space to um, make my print. So when you're making a, any relief print, um, you want to consider the positive and negative space. The positive space is the space that you're going to have ink or paint on. Um, and the negative space is everything that you're carving away. Um, and that is essentially going to be the color of your surface that you're printing on. In this case, that's our fabric. Um, so for this, um, I'm doing a very simple um, line work, I would say, um, and I plan on printing it in repeat to make somewhat of a pattern. Um, so it doesn't need to be super fancy. And how I'm doing that is um, sometimes I'm going in at a 90 degree angle with my knife and then to carve those sections out, I'm going in at a 45 um, just to remove those things. Um, and you wanna be kind of delicate because uh, since you are carving away uh, these little pieces, um, if by accident anything slips, um, there's a chance that you might move, uh, not move, but lose one of those little uh, stamp elevated pieces. Um, it's not the end of the world, it's a potato. Um, you can, if it, was, if it was like something that was essential to your print, you can always just grab another potato. Um, but if it's not, then I have a philosophy that uh, we turn our mistakes into masterpieces. So uh, if it's not mandatory for your piece, don't fret and move on. Uh, sometimes the best mistakes kind of make up a whole piece. It's actually really fun trying to work with mistakes and mm -hmm. it's sort of inevitable too if you're if you're carving for the first time you're you're bound to make a mistake that maybe it didn't turn out the way that you wanted to or you slipped like Abby was saying and you mm -hmm. cut off a piece that you didn't want um, but it's a great mindset to have to just instead of getting upset about it to work with it and see uh, what you can create with it from there. Totally and so if you have a compost nearby uh, since it is potato, it's organic material, so you can just be putting that um, in the compost. I'm just putting it aside for now. Um, and my stamp is complete. What I'm going to want to do, since it's all fresh uh, and moist, um, I'm actually going to take uh, one, just a piece of fabric, and this one is just a sleeve from the last uh, t-shirt that I cut, and you're just going to dab it, make sure that it's not too moist. And look what just happened. I have a little wiggly piece. It hasn't completely fallen off, um, but it's hanging on there. So I might lose it midway when we're printing. But for now, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll just show you quickly too. This is sort of um, what a tassel bag would look like. And you can use the sleeves as the handles um, and put your items in there. Or if you wanted to flip it, um, which is what we did for that example tote, you would just quite simply flip the t-shirt inside out and you can mm -hmm. cut that tag off as well. Um, and then you have a t-shirt without the tassels. Mm -hmm. um, so what's happening there with my the curve uh, is most likely because this t-shirt was, uh, it had like a scoop bottom. It was styled. It was styled, it was yes, styled. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, just a matter, it probably had something to do with maybe I didn't cut it straight, um, but uh, the style of the t-shirt that you grab as well will have an effect on mm -hmm. how you cut the tassels. Mm -hmm. And how cool your tote bag will look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, if you don't want the seams too, you can do kind of this in reverse. You can flip your t-shirt inside out and do the tassels mm -hmm. that yeah. way. Yeah, so I would, be, I would be cutting it and tying it this way so the tassels are on 
uh, like an inside out t-shirt and then I would flip it the opposite way so there's no seams. Yeah. All right, so friends, uh, I think we've come to the, the point in the workshop where we actually get to start printmaking. Um, so for those of you who have print made, printed before, um, there's lots of different ways and materials you can use. Um, you could use ink, uh, which is like the proper uh, material that you would typically use for something like a linoleum. Um, for this, since it's not super technical, you can use um, just everyday acrylic paint, um, things. You might want to invest in something that will be a little bit more permanent on your fabric if you do decide to eventually wash uh, these tote bags. Mm -hmm. um, for this, we're actually just going to be using some house paint because we have tons lying around the studio. Um, and I know myself, I have lots at home from home projects, so you might have some as well. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, um, acrylic paint is super easy to get uh, anywhere. You can mm -hmm. get house paint from uh, any kind of hardware store, but you can also get just uh, plain old acrylic bottles, um, which come in these, sorry for my reach, nope, they come in okay. these little bottles at the baller store. Um, so you can get them in a, in a few different colors. So it's... Um, a pretty inexpensive investment if you are interested in doing this. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? Oh, the fabric paint. Um, if you oh, yeah. want to get fabric paint for something that's more, um, like Abby said, can can resist water or can resist uh, getting put through the wash, you can get fabric paint from any art store. Um, and then you would work it the same way, but then you can just put it through a dryer or use a hair dryer to heat set it so that yeah. it stays. Um, on whatever surface you're printing on. Yeah, and uh, fun fact, Wyndham Arts uh, Supply Store downtown has fabric medium, so you can take that medium and put it in any paint, uh, and it makes it uh, actual fabric paint. So something maybe a that's little bit always, more advanced to invest yeah. in. And that's always fun too if you have an acrylic uh, paint color that you love, yes. and you can't find it in a fabric yeah. paint. Yeah, like a nice like neon pink. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Um, so we're doing, we're doing tassels. We're doing tassels. We're doing oh, tassels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I have just coated this surface with some paint. Um, each time you print your potato stamp, since we are just using regular paint and it's a potato, uh, you're going to want to reapply that, uh, medium each time you print. Um, so I'm going to start up at the top. I'm going to apply firm pressure, and there we got our cute little stamp. Here we go. And you, make, you can make it super simple and just have one uh, stamp. You can yes. also, so we cut the potato uh, this way, but you can also cut it long ways so mm -hmm. you have more of a surface on your potato um, to make a bigger design. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I think if you buy a sweet potato, generally those are larger than just a regular um, kind of field potato, yellow potato. Um, so you can think about size when you do this. Uh, you can have one stamp or you can do what Abby's doing and make a pattern. Mm -hmm. um, and Abby's also, it's a nice way of creating a pattern when you rotate the design. Good call, yeah. Um, which is a simple way of making something look like it's a little more uh, complex than it actually is. Yes, exactly. And you can have fun with this. Like you can have multiple potatoes and kind of work in different shapes and uh, play with orientation. You can also play with multiple different colors. Like you could be um, wiping in between colors so that you have uh, more of a variety on your tote bag. Um, we wanted to kind of highlight how simple and easy this uh, process is. So for this workshop, we're just going to be using one color, mm -hmm. but um, the world is your oyster. <laughs> yeah, because if I wanted to, I could take this potato and sort of, that's just the other half of, mm -hmm. it's the same potato, so it's, um, it's no waste, really. It's the, same, it's the same material and could go along the bottom. Um, so potatoes are one way, while Abby's doing this, I'll just mm -hmm. sort of talk about uh, stamping. If you are interested, if this is something that you want to continue, 
Um, potatoes are the easiest, most accessible, I would say, uh, form of printmaking, but there are lots of different types of printmaking. Um, the ones that are sort of closest to this form would be um, either woodblock or linoleum, which are both uh, materials that you can get at art stores. Um, wood, of course, you can get at any kind of a hardware store um, or scrap bins on the side of the road even. Mm -hmm. um, you want something fairly soft, mm -hmm. like pine would be ideal. Yeah, something that's easy enough to carve into. I would say from the potato, it would probably be easiest to move on to linoleum. So this mm -hmm. is an example of a lino block. Um, it's just... Uh, it Specifically came, soft. Linoleum, yeah, this yeah. is soft oleum. It came from linoleum flooring. The first, I think, yeah. I think f the first lino block um, came from an actual lino flooring, um, piece of flooring. So there is like a harder uh, carving lino, but this is soft oleum, so as you can see, it's super bendy, it's super easy to uh, manipulate, and you use similar tools to what Abby was using for um, the potato carving, uh, and you just carve away at the soft oleum. It's very similar. It feels like a rubber eraser, um, <laughs> which is one of my favorite things to do as well. I think Abby's favorite is potato stamps and mine yeah. are rubber eraser stamps, just because they're so easy and super uh, quick and accessible. Uh, and the nice thing about linoleum as well, I guess you could do it on potatoes, is that they are double-sided. So you can yes, carve yeah. on both sides, um, which is a nice kind of, if you maybe mess up or if you want to save on costs, you can use both sides because you don't have to carve yeah. uh, too deep. Mm -hmm. to we love, we love, love, love minimal waste here at Otherwise Studios. Yeah. yeah. Um, another way that you can use linoleum is um, if you carve out the stamp um, this is a super little tiny stamp, but we mm -hmm. carved around the shape that we wanted. And then it's easier if you're lining up and doing, like if I wanted to put this cactus on top of Abby's um, abstract circles, I could easily line it up to exactly where I wanted it to go mm -hmm. if I wanted to print on top. So that's a nice way of doing sort of layered stamps. And then the other way is wood block, which we talked about. A soft wood is best um, if you have like a pine, uh, mm -hmm. something that's easy to carve into so that you're not slipping and hurting yourself. Um, but despite it being soft, you want to be careful of um, slipping and hurting yourself because wood yeah. is harder just in general. So it's easier to kind of lose track of where uh, your carving tool is going. But this is another form of printmaking that you could use. It's similar, it's like the relief process. Yeah. And this is like, comes from long, 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 traditions of people making prints and fiddling around and experimenting. And I'm sure there's lots of other ways you can do relief prints um, that we haven't even thought of. So get creative, check out what you have available in your house. Um, Pretty much anything yeah. you can carve into or make an indent will make a print. Uh, so styrofoam, um, like anything that you can make. We've made prints from tinfoil before even when yeah. you, can, you can make a slight indent in tinfoil. Um, so you get creative, go through your recycling bin. Um, it's a lot easier than it might seem because printmaking seems pretty daunting, but it's actually very accessible. When you Look at it, I'm it. printing with a potato. <laughs> <laughs> On an old t-shirt. Yeah. So this is going to be the last one I do. And for all of you who've been gasping at my little my little guy who almost fell off little repeatedly he made it through the whole <laughs> process um and we've got a lovely tote bag to rock all of our goodies i'm gonna take my my beautiful books <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> and i'm going to put them into my brand new tote bag And Yay. I'm gonna rock it around town. Ready for the farmer's market. Do, do, do. <laughs> and that's a super easy way of making a tote from pretty much nothing. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of different ways uh, that you could do this. This isn't the only way, lots of different materials. Um, and if you ever have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Yeah, we'd love to see what you work on. We want to see pictures. We want to see your little home studio yeah. where you're working. Yeah. Um, we're super eager to see uh, what you come out with. Cool. Thanks for coming to the studio Thank today. Thank you. <laughs>